Just a couple of minutes. Oh, okay. We have to accept. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I tried to set it up so that everybody can join if they just have the link, but it's usually. I'm trying not. to give some eyes to the students in the robotics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to join and. Does the students already know what is robotics? They have something in the in the course? No. I'm pretty sure you have some knowledge. May I think? Robotics. More By the way, I'm sitting IT, not the uh, IT. Sure. Okay. No. Anyway, to control a, a robot, you need a computer. <laughs> uh, what is your background? Um, IT mainly, like uh, computer science. Uh, okay, it's quite science. close. Yes. Robot, yes. Yeah, but with computer science, you can see that the robot is only the mechanical part, but all the other I mean, part is in electronics in the past, so... Yeah, but... Maybe. Okay. Yeah, so there, there seems to be a few people in online, so okay. I think everybody who's, who's coming is, is present, so let's... Let's start. Yeah. Okay, my name is Nun Freire and I'm from Portugal, from Coimbra. Uh, I'm working in the Polytechnic of Coimbra. It is uh, one of the uh, institutions in the middle of Portugal. Uh, Coimbra is the, the city of students. Uh, we have the oldest university over there. And I'm here in, in Sena Joki to uh, uh, make a presentation in robotics. Uh, the idea is to to present um, some aspects uh, of uh, industrial robots, and also in the end, I, I'm going to make some comparison uh, between these uh, industrial robots with uh, with the cobots and these new robots. Uh, I will go and this is uh, the the the, the, resume, the summary of our. Uh, our presentation. I'm going to do some introduction about robotics. Um, also, I'm going to identify our, uh, the different types of uh, robots. Um, how can we operate in a, in a uh, fault diagnostic? Um, and then how to identify how to use robots in, in a factory automation. Yesterday we we visit uh, a factory here. Um, and they have a lot of uh, industrial robots. Um, also, I, I'm going to present some uh, some different structures um, as well, uh, some uh, additional devices that we can use in robots to do some uh, different applications. Uh, and uh, I'm going to present also some. Uh, operating, handling, and programming industrial robots using online and offline methods of programming. This is important because if we have a company working and we have the robot over there, we should know we cannot stop the, the line because we want to, to develop something and then if we lose more than some, some minutes, they were going to have a huge uh, <laughs> stop of working and it's it's we, we can we can do everything offline then we test online for a few seconds uh, then how can we uh, select some devices for automatic handling and integrate this kind of, de of devices for automatic and products uh, we can see even in this uh, uh, image there are different uh, type of robots we can use uh, uh, fixed or manipulative robotics or mobile, mobile robots, or both. And the idea is to do the mechanical part of the system to uh, perform a specific task. The main problem to solve in mobile robotics concerns the navigation and uh, uh, locomotion. Um, the, the, type, the type of robots for instance, in kind of uh, locomotion, we can have uh, wheels or legs or different kinds of uh, uh, wheels, in the, like a catapult, 
uh, we can move in, in two dimensions, three dimensions, like uh, a drone or a, a submarine, and we can have this kind of uh, mobile robots. But when we are talking about uh, a robot, there are a lot of questions. What is a robot? Okay? And there are many definitions. Uh, the American institution, RIA, um, defines a robot as an industrial a robot, as a multifunctional program manipulator, capable of handling materials, parts, tools, or special devices through program movements to perform a variety of tasks. This is for them what is a robot. Of course, we can improve a lot of things using new technology. Uh, but in real, what we have, this is some image of different industrial robots uh, that we can see in the, in the companies, in the factories. And they are useful to do a lot of tasks for manipulating objects. Uh, and when we trying to do this uh, kind of robots, what we are doing, we are repeating what human already made. We are doing the same tasks. We are using the same facilities as human using the arms. And as we can see here in this image, we have the robot and the uh, human arm. And as we can see, we have uh, more than seven uh, degrees of freedom. Three of them are uh, to move the, the shoulder and the other three are using to move the, the hand. But we need at least three to uh, make the position of the robot and more three uh, uh, degrees of freedom to give some orientation of the flange of the robot. Uh, with six de degrees of freedom, we can reach any palm point in the, in the, in the workspace and we can uh, rotate the robot and still staying in the same point but changing the orientation for do the manipulation, for instance. And of course, when we increase these numbers of degrees of freedom, we are increase the complexity of the control of the system. Uh, this, uh, this robot uh, consists on the series of the uh, rigid bodies that we call the links and they are connected uh, by joints. As we can see, this is a joint. Here we have a joint, another one. And we have the base of the robot and the end effector. And we can see the connection between the base and the end effector uh, are doing by the joints and the links. Each of these uh, six links will going to provide some uh, kinematic behavior for the robot. Uh, the last one uh, will going to uh, change the, the, the orientation of the, the, the robot for doing some different tasks. Uh, if we look also to these uh, two pictures or this small video, we can see uh, different robots manipulating uh, food. And the idea is to have this uh, uh, robot with six axes to do uh, some normal task to reach to a, a different position or, or orientation in the, in the workspace. And also, when I talk about the singularities, as the points of singularity in the, in the system, uh, we need to know how uh, to make the, the, the kinematics, how to um, see how to obtain the, the points in the workspace and also the points in the joint space of the robot. Yeah. Uh, when we want to convert these, these positions from the robot to the workspace, because we are human, we understand what is the, the workspace, the robot understand what is the, the joint space. Yeah. Okay? And to obtain the, the workspace, if we have the joints uh, of the robot, we use the, the direct kinematics and we uh, obtain the, the position of the robot in the workspace. But if we have the, the, the position of the robot in the workspace, using the inverse kinematics, we can obtain the, the different angles of the joints. 
But depending on the configuration of the robot, we can have different uh, joints uh, for the same uh, uh, position because of the, the, the orientation. If we observe for the real uh, workspace, we only need uh, uh, X, Y, and Z. Uh, on, we only need three uh, degrees of freedom to put the robot in some specific position. And we are using six because of the orientation. Yeah. And for that reason, we are increasing this, the number of, uh, of joints to, to perform some different tasks, to change uh, the orientation of the robot for doing some manipulation. And we are also increasing the complexity of the system. And when we are doing the kinematics, we we are, um, for instance, if we are using the inverse kinematics because of the configuration, we are going to, we, we should avoid the singularity points. And the singularity points are happen because the, the matrix of the, our system will going to uh, put the, the, the velocity to infinite. You're, you're going to increase the velocity of the system and if we are trying to reach uh, singularity points, we are uh, increase the velocity, and then for this position, we we will go into. Can I can I use the, the yes, part to, please to, to, to try to explain this? For instance, a single robot with two degrees of freedom. Okay, and. We are using only, only a plan. We have two joints, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is the first angle, and here we have the second angle. For this position here, we must have some position over here. And if we try, if, if we imagine L1 equal to L2, if we try to do this movement, for instance, Okay, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem because when we reach this singular point, the elbow of the system, because in this situation also we have the possibility of two, for the same position of two orientations, with a low elbow or upper elbow. But when we try, uh, trying to move the robot, if we pass in this region, we're going to have a, a big problem it will be because of the singularity. And in this position here, we, we can have the robot L1, L2, or like this, L1 and L2. All of them, they are possible. And we are moving the, the elbow faster to perform this task over here. And in the joint, this is, we are changing the position in the space and in the, or in the Cartesian uh, workspace. In the joint, it's more easy because we only have one uh, position. is the angle of each link. Mm. Okay? Yeah. And of course, but if we want to do a, a trajectory from point A to point B, for, for us, because we are human, it's simple, okay? This is a, a simple yeah. trajectory. For the robot, it's very complex. Yeah. Because if we do the same, going to point A to point B in the joints, we're going to do something like this. Yeah. Some strange trajectory, okay? Mm -hmm. This is when we use the, kinema the direct kinematic or when we use the inverse kinematic. Well, this... Uh, existence of singularities will going to represent the loss of mobility. Mm. We should avoid the, the singularities, even in the industrial uh, uh, system. Uh, as also we can see in this uh, small uh, image, we, we use uh, the industrial robots for uh, different reasons. Uh, some, them, some of them, they are economic, uh, 
because they need some efficient in the, in the company. Uh, some of them they, they use to guarantee the quality of the system. Of course, if we look at the efficiency of this, we can work with a robot uh, seven days a week. Uh, we can work even in the, in the evening. Uh, the robots can work in uh, different uh, uh, working uh, conditions and some of them they are very dangerous for humans and we put robots to do it. For instance, manipulate uh, a load, a big load for a human could be not good after uh, some, some weeks or some months the people will going to, to um, not enjoy to do this kind of job and and they are this this kind of job is is is, um, is dangerous also uh, as you can see here all the robots are uh, separated in the in the company by these uh, um, walls these walls also they have some sensors if yeah. you're trying to uh, go inside of this cage uh, they will going to shut, shut down the system and they will going to stop uh, the robot because it, they, they are dangerous. They don't know because this is pre-programmed uh, software. Yeah. They don't know if there are people inside. Uh, if you're trying to open or trying to pass through some uh, point, they, they will going to, to protect the, the human and they will going to stop. Well, how can we identify these, these robots uh, and how can we use these robots in the industry? Uh, let's, let's see uh, the seri joint link, this one is the seri, and the parallel joint link. And we both uh, see these kind of robots yesterday in the company. Um, they are different. They have uh, some different aspects, and they, are, they, they have different applications also. Okay? But they are different the type of uh, uh, series robots, as you can see also here. Um, well, let's, let's start with the Cartesian robot. This is uh, one of the first ones, because it's simple. Uh, the idea is to, to, to make the movement between, uh, from one point to another. Typical as a Cartesian robot, what we are doing is linear movements in all of the axes. As you can see, this is the, the volume, the uh, area of work. And there are a lot of applications. For instance, pick and place operation, adhesive application, assembling, inspection. Um, and it's quite easy to develop this kind of uh, uh, Cartesian robot. Even your students are doing in the in the end of the, the year. They must do this kind of uh, uh, small devices. Uh, I saw it in, in the lab uh, as a project. A small devices to to do some different applications with this kind of robots. Uh, the cylindrical robot or the spherical robot. They are almost the same as you can see. Uh, this is. Uh, 2R and P, uh, and P is the prismatic uh, joint, and the, the R is the rotational uh, joint, and they, we have a, a lot of applications. It's also simple uh, robots with uh, two or three links, but uh, with a specific um, uh, configuration. And uh, these kind of applications for these robots are for assembling, uh, coaching application, handling, because these they are quite limited. They have few uh, degrees of freedom, but they have less singularities. They could be faster to do some applications. Okay, Trans material transfer uh, or injection molding, and they repeat this task. They cannot do a lot of tasks, but they can do s small tasks, but uh, quite well, uh, quite well. Uh, Scala robots also for pick and place. These kind of robots they are faster, yeah. uh, as you can see also the dimension of the robot. But anyway, the workspace is limited, just like this is limited. Uh, but we can uh, easily 
uh, get from one point to, to another and do uh, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, pick and place uh, applications. This is an example in a factory, uh, also with food, we can see that here, here we, we are using the, 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 the parallel robots. Okay? Uh, but this kind of robots, they are uh, faster enough to do the pick and place, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for instance, using the, 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 this envelope of, of the workspace that we, you, we can see here uh, to, to move from one position to another. Mm -hmm. okay? uh, and this is the, the versatility of this, this robot. Uh, the, the kinematic of the parallel robot, as we can see, this is the faster robot. Mm -hmm. I think they, they reach four meters by second, yeah. some of these robots. Uh, we can see that some different movements, as we, we can see over here, when we want to move the, 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 the flange of the robot, we are moving all the joints yeah. at the same time. Okay? All the joints will go into uh, change position to uh, change the, the end effector of the road. Okay, that's also the reason to to do less effort because we are using all the all the, the, the joints to perform some tasks. And also we can change the, the acceleration easily because we have the effort of all, all the muscles of the robot to yeah. do this to and to perform this this uh, um, movements but we have also some problems mm -hmm. the, the first problem is the workspace yeah. we only have a limited workspace to do this as we can see and they can work over here is quite limited comparing to the size of the robot mm -hmm. and then comparing to the other robots mm -hmm. okay we, if we compare articulated robot we have a big workspace Yesterday we saw a huge yeah. robot <laughs> over there. That's quite large. Yeah, it's quite large. <laughs> uh, what is the basement of this uh, fast operation? This one? Yes, this kind of delta. Yes. The delta, the parallel robots. Well, the, I saw some some of them with uh, one meter. Yeah. One meter. More. Is it limited? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite limited, but. Also, we need a lot of uh, the structure to support the robot. Should be uh, good, stable. Otherwise, because of the acceleration, yeah. it's also uh, a problem. Of course, we have uh, good accurate of the system, but uh, we need to have also the stability yeah. of the system to support the robot. Typical in the food industry, they have two or three or more yeah. Robots with the vision system and the pick and place, yeah. they have fit faster pick and place, but all the structure where are the robots but must be fixed in, yeah. the, in the ground, otherwise, everybody uh, they are going to wash away. Yes. Yeah. Because I think uh, servo motors are. Yeah, they use servo motors. Yes, but for each. They for are uh, in different kind of robots, they are um, as fast as other, but this limited area. Uh, uh, which is currently this... Uh, Yarmo, don't forget that you have three axes and yes, this okay. axis and all of them they are connected. It's, it's like a, a closed chain. Yeah, okay. Yes. You move one motor, yeah. all the structure will going to move. Yeah. That's a problem. Um, the articulated robots. Well, here we have most used robots in the in the in the companies, even in our labs, mm -hmm. typical we buy uh, articulated robots instead of buying uh, the other robots. But here, if we try to compare with the human arm, uh, this is the, the the typical configuration of a manipulator. We can of course put the manipulator in the wall or in the roof. Uh, all also we can change the tool of the robot okay we can increase 
uh, more more joints. For instance, if we put a linear table, we can move the robot from one position to another. Yeah. It's like another jo uh, joint. Also, I put here because it's not uh, an industrial robot, but this uh, articulated robot. The the um, cobalt yes. is also uh, all the cobots. They are articulated. Yeah. Okay. And there are a lot of uh, applications, uh, for instance, automatic assembling, machine loading, and loading, welding, and so on. This is the typical, uh, we saw yesterday, manipulation, uh, and a pick and place. Yeah, and I think that with an articulated robot, it's, it's easier to understand what it can do because it's, it's an arm. So yeah. you, you can have yeah. an intuition of how The idea is to. When we have a company, okay, let me put the robot because the, the robot will going to help the human to do yeah. some task. Yeah. And this task to put, for instance, unloading or loading, uh, yeah. it's uh, very, very common to put uh, some industrial. Yesterday we saw the big one yeah. with, to, to carry 500 kilos from one place to another. We cannot do this, this with, a, with a person. Yeah. Okay? And we using using this kind of manipulators, we can we can do a lot of things. But uh, if we are comparing, as example, this articulated robot to the Delta, there is a in Delta was a three seven motors, and here is a four six six. six. Uh, where is the six motors? Yeah, uh, we are we are going to have one in the base. Base, yes. of course, I we have because that base. We have three. Yes. Only for the, the, yes, the position, three, then arm. three three angles for three joints for the orientation, One, because we can two, three yes, but also uh, also four. But we have this yes, okay. I remember. We have the other three to change the orientation of the the manipulator. Then we are increasing angles. Okay, we can have us an idea. We are copy mm. the arm of the the the. the the human, mm. but we can copy as a uh, um, an animal, yeah. and we can use uh, like a, a, how do you say uh, in English um, a snake. Mm. Yeah. The the robot could be like a snake yeah. with a lot of joints, but of course when we are increasing Got the it. joints, we are going to have more singularity points, mm. or we can limit. The, the angle of the uh, uh, it's like the, the snake. There are some limits in the in the joints of each yeah. uh, part of the the, the the spine of the the snake. But also we are losing the torque, the the force, yeah. because we are increasing yeah. the the joints, and we need also we need to put a motor over there, yeah. the, some weight and so on. It will going to lose a lot of energy to, to, to improve uh, some uh, ma ma manipulability of the robot. Yes, but uh, if we uh, uh, think about uh, operational speed of this articulated robot, uh, is it a gripping limited factor? Or? Yeah, but well, uh, these articulated robots, they work at 2.5 meters per, per second. Yes. It's 2.5 and the uh, the others, the, the Delta robots, the parallel, they move at five, four, four point five. Okay. Four meters, four yes. meters against two meters and a half. It's, it's the double of the speed. Yes, and if we are talking about what is the speed of our cooperative robots? It's one meter. One meter, yes. But uh, and if we are, one meter is, uh, First one is and double speed is articulated and double speed is also delta. Yeah, but don't forget if we are moving in the uh, in the workspace with the inverse kinematics, you don't want to program nothing to move in two meters per second. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's one meter, yeah. like the cobalt. And when you are moving in the joints, then you move at two meters. Mm -hmm. And when we are working with parallel robots, we are also working in the workspace. We are moving between one point to another in the X 
and y is, is, is not in the joint. Uh, we change, of course, the, the configuration of the robot because all the motors are moving, mm -hmm. but we, we must do only different tasks like, for instance, for the, the Delta robot, we are moving from one point to another and that's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the industri industrial robot, this, this kind of configuration, we do not only one trajectory, we do a, a, a lot of trajectories. And it's quite different. Um, this is the workspace for each robot that I spoke. They are completely different. If we look at the workspace of the industrial uh, robot, articulated robot, comparing even with the, with the other ones. And this is what we find inside of the uh, workspace of each one. As you can see here, yeah. This is the parallel. This is the envelope that you can work comparing to the others. Imagine, this is the size of the robot and you have the amplification of the, the movement of the end effector comparing to uh, this one of, with the SCARA. We have more workspace uh, in, the, in the industrial robots, okay? Of course, we need the, the, to obtain the mathematical equations to define the robot links and joints and to see all the, the, these limitations. Even for the food uh, students, uh, we can also uh, put the cobots yeah. uh, to, to, to work with the robot. And of course, if it is not possible to reach one position, well, the robot will say, I will not go over there. It's like the industrial robot. I can reach one meter, but I, if I define robot, you go two meters, you cannot go. Yeah. You're going to have a limitation, uh, is the dimension of this, this, uh, this structure. And of course, if, you, if, you, if you're it's in a specific place and it has like, a, 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 like an edge yes. of the building for you. Can, <laughs> but we can create also this, in, uh, yeah. by software, we can create some limitation. Yeah, so well, we're going to put the robot here to yeah. do some work, but this is a table and I'm going to put in the software, this is the limitation, I cannot go through it. Through it, yeah. And then also there are people here, also I can put some limitation, I cannot move more than this. Mm -hmm. And we can increase this uh, software uh, to limitate the workspace of the robot, okay? Of course, we are, if we are using this robot, we have more workspace, of yeah. course, we, we have more responsible, to, to, to cut this uh, workspace. Anyway, when, when we are uh, uh, doing the uh, ho robot configuration, don't forget the robot uh, has a, 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 a computer that controls all the axes. And we, do, we must do the, the, all the configuration. Um, and also we, can, we, we should explain what is the prismatic joints, convolution joints, spherical joints in the, in, the, in, the, in the robot. Also each configuration and size of each link will going to give the collection of points that we call the workspace. And the shape of the workspace that we saw previous for each robot is unique related to this characteristic, of course, when we, have, when we have an industrial robot, we put some end effector, a gripper or some tool, and also this should be in the model, otherwise, if we are moving the robot with the tool, the, all the workspace will be different, okay? Uh, this is the, the Delta, this is a, a faster uh, robot, and as we can see the envelope of for the pick and place movements, we are going to have some limitations. We must say, okay, this is the, the place we are going to put the robot, and inside of this envelope, we are going to move 